Welcome back. Today we're going to make uh, another one of those countertops like we made in the previous video. This one's only six feet long, um, so it should go fairly quickly. Not going to really. So materials uh, that we're going to use, uh, we got a particle board, which is ripped down to 24 inches wide. Uh, we got these uh, ripped out of the other side of that same sheet of particle board. They're inch and a half wide. That'll be support that go around the perimeter of the bottom of the countertop. And we have select pine one by six uh, material. We got four of those and then a one by three of the same select pine in a six foot. It's going to finish up the end. It'll be back towards the towards the wall. Um, Going to screw it down, get them as tight as you can, um, use an inch and a quarter screws uh, and a ton of wood glue. Uh, it sucks it down there and holds it in place and we'll stain it gray and put a couple coats of polyurethane on it and it'll be a nice little uh, countertop. Uh, should go pretty quickly. So all the top pieces are in. Um, there's just, like I said before, there's a little bit of lippage, but it's going to be able to be sanded out. You can see it's on top of the three-quarter inch um, particle board there, and that's three-quarter inch pine. Uh, what I'm going to do is flip this over and put another surround, an inch and a half surround of the particle board for support, but also uh, we want the countertop to look extra thick, so it's going to make it so we're going to have like a two and a half inch surround on this, make it look super thick. So I got the uh, one by three wrap done. This will be the only exposed end. So the other end is just a straight cut because it's going to be against the wall. But you can see that it 
gives you an extra thick looking piece of wood. All looks like it's one piece. And there's a few gaps here and there between some of the boards, but when I, after I stain, I will make a paste with uh, the stain and some wood fill and they'll all blend together. So got the gray stain on, sanded it after the first coat was dry, and then put a second coat on. It's not drying out evenly, so there may be another light sanding to do before the polyurethane goes on. It's not too bad. Wanted to be able to see the grain coming through. Edge turned out pretty nicely. It's nice and sharp. So next thing will be the polyurethane. Here's the second coat of a satin finish polyurethane. Still very wet, but once it dries down, it'll be a nice solid top coat. Turned out well, you can still see the highlights of the wood through the stain. Um, put on one coat of poly and did a light sanding in between and put another on top. You can see the thickness of the wood there again. Okay. Next stop is uh, we're going to let this dry for at least a couple days and then it's got to travel a bit and next step will be the install. Alright, here's the spot where the 6 foot countertop is going to go in as the 12 inch uh, base cabinet towards the end where there's going to be some floating shelves coming off that. Um, there's a, towards the, right above the outlet there, there's a uh, pretty big bulge in the wall which I knew about that we're gonna have to uh, work on seeing how we can get it in there so the countertop straight whether I have to notch into the drywall or work on the countertop a, a little bit uh, probably a combination of both all right so here we go 
just doing a quick dry fit, putting the appliances in, see how everything fits with the baseboard, uh, making sure the doors have enough room to operate, getting ready to notch the baseboard for the 12 inch cabinet so that sits against the wall, then we'll start leveling it up uh, that three quarters of an inch to the front. So here we go. All right, so with the construction business, hangman business, you have to pivot sometimes. And luckily I had an alternative. The wall that we, was, we were originally going to use to put the countertop on was so out of plumb, um, it just wouldn't work. So luckily uh, we had a couple different options where we could put it. One turned out there was a return vent there that would be covered so we can't use that. So we were able to put it in this corner. It was somewhat limited because I made the countertop in the shop where most of the time I would be doing it on site. It would have given us a couple more options, but basically the right side of the countertop wasn't finished because it was gonna go against the wall. So this was the alternative that was chosen here. So there's still plenty of room uh, for the door to open and all the doors to open on the appliances. And then we'll have the countertop here, and we'll have two floating shelves come off the, the uh, base cabinet. So, all right, so that's where we're at. We'll get, probably get set to make the shelves for the side of the base cabinet. All right, I moved ahead a little bit. I have these, uh, some spare butcher block countertop left over from the kitchen part of this house. So I cut some. Uh, pieces that are nine and a half inches wide by 23 uh, to make some floating shelves off the side of this base cabinet. And what I did, you can look inside here, which I also had to run the electric in here because it fell right on that, but it's not that big of a deal. If you can see down in there, there's a strip of uh, one by, and these are six inch lag screws. So I ran it through the one by with a big washer on it uh, into the side of the butcher block, which is an inch and a half thick. And you can pretty much stand on this now. So um, it's probably complete overkill, but I don't like to be called back for any issues. So I'd rather do it now uh, during construction here. So I'm gonna do one more um, the idea was to display some wine bottles on the side here. So I'm just going to find a bottle and make sure you got enough space between the bottom shelf and the top shelf here. Okay, second shelf is in with about 13 or so inches space uh, in between, about 13 um, from the top of the top shelf. To where the bottom of the countertop will be the countertop will overhang just a little bit more than the shelves just another quick shot uh, using the one by came up one washer short somehow but still worked uh, that's why I chose to do three complete overkill with a washer and six inch lag but it's good and sturdy now so nothing to worry about um, all level plumb everything so these will be painted along with the uh, cabinet there to match the gray cabinets in the kitchen. So this will be the only thing that will be painted um, in here as far as cabinetry goes. And then we have the gray stained countertop to go on. Got cleats glued to the wall now for some support. Pull up that end above the appliances and the space cabinet will take care of the left side perfectly so ready to set the top so here's the final product Get the uh, countertop installed it's about two and a half inches thick built up uh, got the floating shelves which are made out of the leftover butcher block held in by six inch lag screws just a stock 12 inch cabinet uh, and the two appliances left left as a 
refrigerator right is a freezer so turned out pretty nice thanks for watching